International Harvest, the Lord has supreme reign. It is a church where I am taught and instructed in the ways of God. I will apply God's word in my everyday life. And as a result of that application, there will be a transformation. At International Harvest, I will be cultivated to grow and empowered to go as the Spirit of God enables me. The world that I live in shall be changed. My home, school, my workplace shall not be the same because of Jesus the Christ working in me and through me. Amen and amen. Welcome to International Harvest Christian Fellowship Church. Your word of the day is, faith in God includes faith in his timing. And now let's take a look at a fellowship shout out. you guys are doing well, staying safe, um, being active, and most of all still learning your Bible verses. I've got candy and Bible books. I miss you guys and I hope to see you soon. Hi guys, I miss Carolyn. Um, it's so good to, um, I want to give you all a shout out and say hi and hope you guys are all well and taking care of yourselves and um, that um, you all are doing well and safe with your families and I just miss you guys and I can't wait to see you very soon. God bless you. Hi, my preschoolers and kindergartners. It's Miss Tony. I miss you guys so much. And study your verses. Don't forget, I will see you guys soon. I love you so much. Bye. Now, parents, just to let the children know that we are thinking about them and that we miss them, we would like to send out just a small package to them. So I'm going to ask that if you would please email me your mailing address just to make sure we have the correct one and list the, the name and the age of your children. This will be for children ages 3 to 14. My email address is Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-R-A -R -R -A dot Prater, P-R-A-T-E-R at yahoo.com we would love to just send them something back to let them know that we miss them and we're thinking about them from the youth department we love you y'all be you. safe and have a we great day bye. 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 bye love you guys thank you for your generous donations to the saginaw community link because of your donations, IHCF was able to provide an additional 400 pounds of dried goods to the food bank. Join us on Monday and Wednesday for our prayer conference line. The number is 916-233-0790. The access code is 725-768. Bible study will be held on Wednesday night using the Zoom app. Children's church lessons are available each week for both preschool and grade school under the Watch Online tab. We're social. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at International Harvest Christian Fellowship. And follow our Instagram at IHCF Church. There you'll find games, many sermons, devotionals, and more. God loves a cheerful giver. Pay your tithes and offering online. Visit the website and click the donate tab. You can also text your donation to 817-435-4447. That concludes our announcements for the week. Thank you so much for listening and have a blessed day. Well, praise the Lord. What a wonderful opportunity to be able to share the word of the Lord with you once again. Our scripture text comes from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to be looking at 
verses 1 through 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doeth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against him. Least ye be weary and faint in your minds. I want to talk about this morning just for a moment, a word in which I have entitled, The Race of Faith. The race of faith. Let's look on to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for another opportunity to come into the house of the Lord. And we ask, Father God, that you would have your way as I decrease, that you may take these lips of clay and this heart, Lord, that I willy, willingly surrender unto you and ask, Father God, that you would speak a word that would encourage your people on today. I thank you for the opportunity. I bless you and honor you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So our text this morning has been deemed by biblical scholars as one of the greatest passages of Scripture uh, uh, written as it relates to the Christian lifestyle as well as that faith that it takes in order to govern that life. And interestingly enough, beloved, as we read this text, we find that the author writes this passage as a word of encouragement. He writes it as a word of encouragement because as he looks into the future, he sees that there is a high possibility that persecution would come to those who are alive during this particular time. Amen. And so, and so beloved, as one who loves the brethren, he, he, he desires not to indulge them with sympathy, but to strengthen them. He, he, he desires to ensure that they are fit for whatever come during life's journey. And so he begins in this 12th chapter, by drawing attention back to the 11th chapter, where many of the experiences of the Old Testament patriarchs are recorded. Amen. These patriarchs, or these spectators, if you will, are those who have ran the race of faith before us. These are the ones considered within the text as the encamped witnesses that surrounds us. And, and interestingly enough, the word witness here is translated from the Greek word martus. Amen. The word is martus, from where we get the English word martyr from. And this word martyr is to be viewed from the perspective as one who has a testimony. Amen. One who has an up close knowledge of God in action. One who has experienced within their own race at times hardships and impossible situations, but faith in God kept them in the game. Amen. And so I, I, I just want to encourage those who may be discouraged this morning. And I want to assure you that God knows and cares all about your situation. Amen. That while we are yet in the midst of this season of pandemic, I want you to know that God loves and cares for you. Amen. So many have lost so much. 
Amen. There, there has been loss of loved ones. I mean, you can't even, amen, hold their hands as they transition from this life to the next. Amen. So many have lost jobs, uh, have lost businesses, and have lost peace of mind. I want to reassure you that while you might be suffering in your faith, faith in God still keep you in the game. Somebody say amen. And what encourages me this morning, beloved, is that these witnesses, just like you and I, had their own struggles. Amen. They had their own heartaches. They had their own pains, yet they continue to run the race of faith. Now, understand they didn't run it perfectly. Understand that they didn't run it perfectly, but they ran just the same. They were men and women of like passion, like, like you and I. They wasn't perfect, and we're not perfect. Amen. Perhaps some of them ran and a little and walked a little, but they stayed in the race. Perhaps some of them, amen, made some lame violations, but they kept running. Maybe some of them even ran off the beaten path, but, but, but because of the way they ran, they were graced, amen, to stay in the race. The fact that they are recorded in the book is evidence that they didn't quit until they finished the race. Some of them endured unspeakable pain. Some of them endured unspeakable suffering, but they just kept right on running. Understand that none of them were extraordinary people. Sometimes we think that those that are in the Bible, amen, had some kind of special anointing, but they was just like uh, uh, you and I. They were merely common men and women of their generation who evidenced a profound faith in God. Amen. So the Hebrew writer writes concerning them in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And if you go back and you look in Hebrews 11th chapter, verse 33 through 39b, he says, he says, it was through faith that these patriarchs subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of sword. It was by faith out of weakness was made whole became valid in battle, turned to flight, amen, the armies of the aliens. It was through faith that women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. What is it that you're running for today? And verse 39b brings it home. He said, all of these, all of these haven't obtained a good testimony. Well, well, how did they obtain a good testimony? They obtained a good testimony through their faith. Amen. When you go back and you read about some of these that are mentioned in the Hebrew epistle, you'll find that these men like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob struggled. But through the eyes of faith, amen, Jesus made up the difference. And so I find this encouraging this morning. Because the outcome of their race demonstrates to us as to what trusting in God can do. Amen. Understand, beloved, that God is faithful to his word. And he's faithful to his promise. That's why it's important that we hang on to his word and that we hang on to his promise. I don't care what it looks like. Situations and circumstances can look grim. But if I just can hang on to what God spoke, if I could just hold on to the promises of God, faith in God keeps me in the game. Amen. In other words, if God took care of them, and if he honored their faith and sustained them and kept them and used them and blessed them and got glory out of their life 
And he's Jesus Christ the same today and forever that he wants to do the same for your life and my life. Amen. And so, as I pondered this text, the Spirit of God reminded me of a few things concerning what it means to be a race runner. First of all, in the natural, a runner understands that they cannot wait until the day of the race in order to run well. Amen. It don't work like that. The runner understands that the race actually begins, amen, at least a month or months beforehand. In other words, the runner must make running a priority. Amen. And so he, he, he makes careful preparations in order to run. So, so, so priority and preparation has a huge impact on the outcome of the race. Oh, I think that's worth posting today. Amen. I want to say it again. Priority and preparation has huge impact on the outcome of the race. Well, if that applies in the natural Likewise, in this spiritual race, we as runners must make our faith run a priority. Look at your neighbor and say a priority. Amen. And so therefore, we must take careful preparation in how we run. Oh, yeah. Priority and preparation, just like in the natural, has a huge impact and outcome on this spiritual race. Amen. So the Hebrew writer speaks in terms of faith priority and faith preparation. Amen. And so, and so he lays out a few guidelines. What does he have to say about preparing for this faith race? Number one, he says, let us lay aside every weight. Amen. See, I can't lay your weight aside. You can't lay my weight aside. We have to lay our weights, he said, what? Aside. And so this, this refers to a runner ensuring that all extra weight has been removed from his body. See, I can't run as fast as I used to. Where I used to wear, hey amen, about 130 pounds, I, I weigh 200 plus pounds now. And the carotene that used to be able to run fast at maybe 180, because of the extra weight, because of the condition of my body, I can't seem, amen, to sprint as fast as I used to. And so in, in a spiritual sense, this refers to anything that hinders our walk with God. And it literally speaks of those things that are innocent in and of themselves. Amen. Not necessarily sin, but, but it has to do with those things that slow us down in the faith race. Amen. They, 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 they somehow become weights and, and then they, and, and we must make the decision to let him go. Doesn't mean that it's a sin, but it's a hindrance. Amen. And there are some things that we indulge ourselves in too much and it becomes a hindrance to our faith race. Hence, we got to cut it out of our life. And the Hebrew writer encourages us, amen, to lay it aside. Amen. This could be something as simple, amen, as Seeking entertainment instead of fellowship. Seeking possessions along with all of the cares of this world. Instead of seeking first the kingdom of God. And so in short, this refers to anything that does not build us up or make us stronger or even become a hindrance in our relationship with God. 
Not only does the Hebrew writer address weights, but he also addresses sin. For he says, let us lay aside every weight and sin. That so, look what he said, easily, easily beset us. Amen. And so from this scripture, biblical scholars has coined a term that they call besetting sins. Amen. Besetting sins. Those sins that, amen, that keep you from running, that keep you out of the race. Amen. That causes you to become shipwrecked, so to speak. Amen. This refers to sins which that, 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 that we cling to or, or those sins that distract or entangles the runner from racing. Amen. You've been disqualified. In fact, the literal image that this phrase projects is that of a man trying to run a race while dressed in a long flowing robe. Amen. I hope you can capture that image in your mind. Amen. Hence, it would be easy to foresee him tripping over his robe and falling out of the race. That's what he means by besetting sins. And so the Hebrew writer points out here that sin must be stripped off. Amen. It it must be laid aside. It must be avoided at all costs. At least it will entangle us and prevent us from finishing the race. Now notice this is something that God won't do. He's given us the tools and all of the things that we need to utilize utilize those tools. Amen. So that we can be strong in the race but it's up to you and it's up to me. Amen. To lay these things aside. Well what else does the Hebrew writer admonishes us to do? Not only Should we lay aside every weight and sin which so easily beset us? But he says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. And so this phrase, this phrase, the race with patience, carries with it the idea of facing life's trial from the point of victory. Amen. Facing life's trials victoriously. In other words, it's that one that understands who they are in Christ. Amen. A few weeks ago in Bible study, we talked about, amen, who we are in in, in Christ and how because when we don't know who we are, amen, we disqualify ourselves. But, but this, this aspect of running with patience, amen, uh, uh, is, the, is for the one that understands that they are in Christ and they run at trouble with conquering attitudes. Amen. Why? Why? Because, amen, it's something that they can do? No, because their faith is in God. You see, the Apostle Paul understood this concept. That's why oftentimes when he wrote, he wrote, amen, with victory in mind. For instance, in Romans chapter 20, chapter 8, verse 28, he says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those, amen, uh, who are called according to his purpose. Don't you know that every believer is called according to his purpose, that God has already orchestrated purpose in your life? And when the enemy comes to try and derail your purpose, it depends on how you handle it will determine whether or not you get through. Another aspect, another aspect of this same phrase, amen, run with patience, is that the word race here is translated from the Greek word agion, agion. Uh, and the word agion is where we get our English word agony from. And uh, the implications of this word is that there will be some tough times. Amen. There's going to be tough times along the journey. And it implies that each of us will have our own experiences. Amen. 
Each of us will have our own challenges, our own agony as we run our own race. It also implies that you can't run in my lane and I can't run in your lane. You see, in the natural, during an official running event, there are guidelines in which to run. And when you don't follow those guidelines, you are disqualified. Amen. And I am too convinced, beloved, that, 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 that the cause of Christ has been greatly hindered by runners who refuse to run in their own lane. And when one refuses to run in their own lane, they can become a hindrance to everyone else in the race. Why do you think Jesus said, woe be on to those that causes other people to stumble? It's good that, you know, they might as well, it's, it's better for them to be, amen, put a millstone around their neck and to toss it into the sea. Becoming a hindrance to everybody else in the race. And so the Hebrew writer draws on this imagery of a track star in order to communicate what I have determined to be three points or three spiritual guidelines and running this spiritual race. So number one, amen, if we're in this spiritual race, one of the things that we must understand is that we are not in competition with one another. We are not in competition with one another. Understand that we are on the same team. When a man or woman of God creates or starts a ministry in the same neighborhood, we on the same team. We are not in competition. Amen. Because we are working as laborers in the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, stop competing with one another. Amen. Because why? We all on the same team. Hallelujah. My job is not to outrun you. Amen. Your job is not to outrun me. Amen. Each of us are to encourage each other as we keep on running. We are supposed to cheer one another on as we run this race. Number two. Our courses have been individually designed. Our courses have been individually designed. That's why we can't compete with each other. Because some courses are not designed or have been purposed for you to run. God graces you to run the course that has been designed for your life. Amen. Amen. Which means that the race that you are running has been prepared specifically for you. And the race that I'm running has been prepared specifically for me. And the best that we can do is to run the race to the best of our God-given ability. You've been anointed to run that race. But pastor, you don't understand it's hard, but you got the anointing to get through it. You anointed, amen, to climb that mountain. Well, Lord, can I just speak to the mountain? Some days you can speak, and other days you just going to have to be anointed to climb. Ah, glory, glory to God. Because God said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you even until the end of the earth. You've been anointed and appointed, amen, to make the race, amen, and to run it to completion. Now, 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 I don't understand. I don't know why some have more twists and turns and other courses, amen, have more peaks and valleys. Yet some courses look like it's a straight straightaway. I, I don't know why that is. Amen. Nor do I understand. But what I do know is regardless as of the design of the course, there is but one way in which to run. And verse 2a clearly points this out. 
He tells us that we are to run what? Looking onto Jesus, uh, who is what? The author and the finisher of our faith. Ah, glory, glory to God. Got to run it a particular way. You got to run it looking on to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. So when we sum all of that up, that means that we must use Jesus as our reference point while we run uh, this race. Amen. God has set us up in the race. Hallelujah. And what we must understand is this. If God said it before us, then when we go along this path, we can make it. And the reason we can make it is because Jesus has shown us how to run. Amen. These are some of the things that the Hebrew writer, amen, pulls out of the text. Amen. For you see, Jesus ran his race and he finished his race or his course that was laid out before him. See, I told you nobody's exempt. Everybody has a race. Everybody has a course to run. And God anoints you to run your race. Amen. And so Jesus stands as a supreme champion in this race called life. And what I love about it, saints of God, is not only is he a participant but he's also the race judge. Glory to God. <laughs> Man, I tell you, that's good. He's not only the participant, amen, but he is the one that's judging the race. Amen. He's the one who decides who's disqualified, and he is the one who decides who is running well. Amen. And what we must understand, beloved, is this. That while we run, we must not look at the other runners. Because in doing so, it will cause us distractions and defeat. But we must not also look at circumstances. Because in doing so, amen, it will cause distractions and defeat. The Hebrew writer says that our eyes must be on the one who started us on the race. And the one who will greet us at the end of the race. Hence, our primary duty while we run. It's to look at him because anything less than that, amen, will hinder our journey. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, bless the Lord. The third point that the Hebrew writer brings out is that we must consider him. While we run, we have to consider Jesus. Amen. That means to ponder. That means to contemplate or meditate, consider his race. Because if we don't, he said, we will become weary and faint in our minds. Every now and then, you got to remember Calvary. <laughs> every, every now and then, you, you got to recall the price that he paid. Amen. For your deliverance, for my deliverance at Calvary. Amen. When I, when I consider him, in other words, when I consider his race as compared to mine, I found that the race, amen, that his race began in poverty and ended up on a cross called Calvary. I found that his race led him around a track that was lined with hatred and lined with bitterness and lined with opposition and those desiring to see him dead. That was the race that he won. I found that his race was a race that set the perfect example of how a race ought to be won. He never faltered. He never failed. He never lost sight of the gold, he never quit running. Ah, glory to God until the race was achieved. The Bible tells us that Jesus ran for the joy that was set before him. Amen. Every now and then you got to shake off distractions and say, Lord, I'm running for the joy. <laughs> glory to God. 
Because you ran for the joy, it gives me strength to run for the joy anyway. He ran for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of God. There's some stuff that you're going to have to endure, beloved. There are some, some things that, that you're, some shame that you're going to have to endure, but it should not hinder your race. You got to keep on running because if Jesus ran, he demonstrated how we must run. The Bible says it was a joy for him to endure the cross, a joy for him to despise the shame. Why? Why was it a joy? See, 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 Jesus was able to look past Calvary, amen, and see the salvation of believers coming into view. Sometimes you got to look past your situation, look past your circumstance. What does it mean if I stick and stay and endure the course? What is the outcome once I get through? Victory is waiting on the other side. Jesus endured, amen, the cross, despised the shame, and is sat down on the right hand of the father he looked past the cross and saw the day when there would be a new heaven and a new earth he looked past the cross and saw a day when salvation would be ultimately complete sin forever destroyed satan forever defeated and perfect righteousness would rule in every heart he looked past the cross beloved there's some things that you're going to have to learn how to look past Oh, glory to God. We, 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 need to, we need to come to the place where, where we are able to look beyond the race, look beyond the situation, look beyond the circumstances of life and see Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says that Jesus ran well. And, and when he finished running, he sat down on the right hand of the father I just wanted to give you a word of encouragement beloved I know that there is much heartache in the world much heartache in our society many people have suffered so much loss there's so much confusion amen in the atmosphere this one is saying this and that one is saying that but I don't want you to be distracted this morning as it relates to this faith run, this race of faith. Wherefore, the Hebrew writer says, and I'm closing with this. Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin, which doeth easily beset us. And let us run this race with patience that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And the crux of how we get through is this verse 3. Consider him. Ponder him. Contemplate him that endured such contradictions of sin as against him. Lest we be weary and faint in our mind. There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. While we are yet running this race, beloved, understand that we are not in competition with one another. You're my brother, my sister, and I'm your brother. We are not in competition with one another. We ought to be rooting each other on. When you rejoice, I rejoice. When you weep, I weep. We are to encourage each other along the way. And as we see the days coming nigh, many are discouraged. It's time, it's encouraging. Amen. It's time for encouraging, encouraging each other. 
Understand that your course and my course has been individually designed. The fact that we're running this race in faith means that God knows all about what's up ahead. Amen. He knows what the journey will entail. And faith in God helps us overcome all obstacles. And as we run, we must run considering him. I hope something may have been said that would encourage you this morning. God knows your every situation and your every circumstance. He is not forgetting about you. Dispel the lies of the enemy that would tell you that if God loved you, none of these things would happen. The devil is a lie. He loves you in spite of it happening. But he's also made you and me an overcomer. Let's look unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord on today. We ask, Father God, that whatever it is that the people of God is struggling with, that you show up and show yourself strong. For Lord, your word says that your eyes are everywhere looking for someone to show yourself strong to. So, Father God, for those that are under the sound of my voice, may they begin to cry out and solicit your attention. May they begin to ponder and contemplate what you endured at Calvary that will remind them that we have victory through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you, we honor you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go in peace. Well, beloved, once again, I bid you amen, goodbye for the moment, amen. We look forward to meeting you online on Mondays, amen, and on Wednesdays, and, and then our Bible study on Wednesdays at 7. But as everything in our nation is beginning to open last week, I talked about the president deeming that uh, churches are opening. And as I shared with you, we met on last week and we talked about, amen, a phased approach to reopening. Now, don't rush to judgment. We're not looking to open now. But part of our opening uh, will require an assessment from the congregation. We're going to send out a survey here in the coming weeks, maybe a few days, uh, to solicit Amen. Some input from you as well. And then once we receive those results back, uh, and it's going to be important that we are able to hear your voice in this as we journey along, uh, we will be able to assess what we must do. And so as those uh, preparations are made, uh, we will continue to put guidance out. I want to encourage you Please do not let the fact that the country or the nation is opening distract you that this virus is still out there. So please be safe. Amen. Please remain prayerful as we continue to move forward and seek to push kingdom agenda in this environment. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. And I thank you for all of the parishioners of International Harvest Christian Fellowship Church. I pray that you would cover each and every one of them, that you would look at their situation and their circumstance and let them know, Lord, that they can be encouraged in their journey. And so I thank you, Lord, for having already showed up and moving on their behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. May your grace rest, rule, and abide upon each of us as we continue to seek your face for direction. We love you, we honor you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.